So my name is Rebecca Taylor. I'm the, the uh, CEO of the University of Southampton, Malaysia. And uh, what I want to do today is to welcome everybody to this presentation. Uh, I want to set the, use the presentation to set the scene of, of who the University of Southampton, Malaysia is, uh, to tell you more about the University of Southampton in the UK, our umbrella organization. And uh, I want to tell you about our programs and the student experience and the very exciting next step that we're taking in terms of our expansion plans. So uh, in order to just set the scene for that, I'll do about a 30 minute presentation with some slides that tells you all about the, the programs and the student experience. I'll then show a, a short video, it's about four minutes long and it really brings everything uh, that I will have said in the presentation, it brings it to life. So I hope that that uh, video will also be helpful. And then in terms of the expansion plans, we have another very short video, um, which shows a little bit more about the new premises. And also very helpfully, it shows the student accommodation so that people can really get an idea of what experience they would have both outside of their study um, and, and in their their sort of through their study experience. So those are the three parts of the presentation and there will be an opportunity to ask questions about all, all of those parts. We are joined today by a selection of uh, staff from the University of Southampton Malaysia who uh, have all a whole range of roles. So in terms of the question and answer, there will be lots of people and expertise um, to give more information about anything that people are interested in. And the last thing I would say before I start is that the presentation focuses predominantly on engineering. We are well established with our uh, engineering programs at the University of Southampton, Malaysia, and we have a number of years of experience of, of students maneuvering through those pro programs, um, having a, a fantastic experience, which we'll talk about, and then uh, graduating from the university and going on to some very, very interesting careers. So we're going to talk about all of that. But also as part of our expansion plan, we are expanding our portfolio. And uh, we're putting in a new program in September 2020, uh, which is the BSc in Business Management. So I'm also going to say a little bit about that, but there's lots of chance either after this presentation or later in the day to talk more about that in depth if there are, are people that have some specific questions about business and the new business programs. So on that note, I'm going to move, move on with my uh, presentation. And uh, the first slide just uh, highlights the world-class education that is offered by the University of Southampton. The university is ranked in the top 100 in the world. Very, very proud of that. And what we're doing is we are identifying programs that would be particularly relevant uh, to students that want to come and study at the University of Southampton uh, and then go, uh, Southampton, Malaysia, and then go on, perhaps have an experience at the University of Southampton in the UK during their studies and then often coming back to this part of the world and going on to some very, very interesting careers. So we're identifying those programs that, that align best to the types of careers that, that students uh, in Malaysia and, and across the wider ASEAN region would be particularly interested in. And I'll, as I said, I'll talk about those programs a little more in the presentation uh, slides later. Uh, we offer, in terms of the type of education, a very hands-on experience through projects and industry engagement. It's another part of what we offer that we're very, very proud of. Very practice-based, very problem-based approach so that students don't just get the theoretical material, but they actually get a chance over and over and over through their programs to apply that material and really understand how it is applicable to, uh, to, to industry and therefore how they can use that in terms of making themselves very employable when they come out of their degree and they're looking to see what the next step is in their career. So just moving down to the third bullet, bullet point, we focus on transferable skills and employability very, very much, very heavily throughout the program. And we do that in a number of ways. So in, uh, in one sense, the transferable skills are embedded into a number of modules and activities that the students participate in throughout their program. Uh, but also we engage uh, uh, extensively with the professional body network that is aligned to our different degrees. So you will hear a little bit more about the, the associated professional bodies 
when you when you attend today the live sessions on the different areas of engineering. Um, but just to give a little bit of an overview, students are really encouraged to participate and be part of their associated professional body. It brings students together both within the University of Southampton, Malaysia and the University of Southampton in the UK, but universities across the world actually with students who are also engaged in those professional body networks. It brings them together talking, networking, um, doing competitions together, working on projects together. It, it brings them together. It starts to nurture those networks that are so important as students move through their studies and then into their careers. Um, and it gives them a real sense of confidence around building up of communication skills, team working skills, analytical skills, all of those things that actually they really need to develop alongside the theoretical material in their programs. So we do a lot of that, transferable skills, employability, and nurturing networks. We have a 94% employability rate of students who are in employment within six months of graduation. In fact, that's for, for our engineering programs, that's actually 94% uh, in three months of graduation. Uh, and we are incredibly proud that our students uh, are so competitive in the market when they come when they've graduated from the university and they go on to some really fascinating careers. And I'll show you a, a slide later on as well that shows some of our students and where they've gone to work after um, after they've graduated from the university. We have exceptional pastoral support. Uh, I, all universities strive to have very strong student support in place. Uh, I have to say the exceptional pastoral support at the University of Southampton, Malaysia is, uh, is uh, more than I've ever seen in a, in a university before. So we have a very high staff to student ratio in most universities, and I say this across a range of programs, but an average staff student ratio might be about sort of 1 to 18, 1 to 20. In some cases, it goes right up to 1 to 24. At the University of Southampton, Malaysia, it's 1 to 8. And so the students get a lot of very personal uh, support, very hands-on experience with their lectures. There's much, much more interaction uh, than you see where that the, the staff student ratio is, is closer to the more um, 1 to 18, 1 to 20, 1 to 24. So they get a lot of personal interaction. And what we see is that really supports them well through the first couple of years of their degree. And then what they, we do is we transition them to the UK where they become parts of bigger cohorts. But at that point, they've had so much personal support and, uh, and sort of nurturing and uh, through their degree program that uh, they are very, very strongly set up, very strong foundation in, in order to succeed well uh, through the, re the rest of their degree. So we've seen, a, we've seen a very, very good pattern of experience through the way in which we handle pastoral support. Um, and even in our expansion plans, it's one of the unique points that we're going to make sure that we keep in place in order to make sure that students have the best support possible. Uh, students also get a, a very international experience with the University of Southampton. Uh, we have at Southampton Malaysia, we have about 10% of our students uh, are international. We're looking to increase that to about 20% over the coming years. Uh, at the University of Southampton uh, in the UK, where they will go and have an experience as well, uh, it's, there's also a, a ratio or a, or a percentage of about uh, 10 to 20 percent of international students, depending on the course that they that they uh, join. Um, but the students are are brought in from over 135 countries. So there are lots and lots of clubs and societies and cultural experiences that the students have throughout their studies. Uh, just a few statistics. As I said earlier, we are in the top 100 of global universities, and the University of Southampton is a founding member of the Russell Group, which is one of the 24 uh, universities, research-led universities in the UK um, that also helps to influence and set policy uh, in, the, in the UK and across the world. Um, we have over 24,800 students. That's obviously in the UK. The University of Southampton, Malaysia is smaller than that. Um, but we are, we are growing and also as we transition students over, they also have the experience of being part of that wider student community. Overall, the University of Southampton has graduated 200,000 students over the year. And as you can see in the bo bottom left-hand corner, 
Uh, the university has over 150 years uh, of history. So again, the University of Southampton, Malaysia is newer. We've been established for uh, eight years now, um, and we are in our expansion plans. We are looking to grow, uh, but uh, we also draw on, on a lot of the history of the university overall, and you can see a lot of that reflected in what the University of Southampton, Malaysia does and how it presents itself. So we bring some of that history into what we do here in Malaysia as well. Uh, we are ranked fifth in the UK for research income awarded. That is very significant because what it means is that the, the academics who are doing cutting edge research, they feed that directly into their teaching. And so the teaching and learning that the students are getting and experiencing throughout their degree um, is very relevant and it gives them the best possible start on a career in their chosen field. Um, and finally, as I said before, we attract students from over 135 countries. So students who come to study at the University of Southampton, Malaysia and or the University of Southampton in the UK will have a very international experience. And we think that's very important in setting students up for their future. Uh, why the University of Southampton? So in terms of the engineering programs, we are ranked third in the UK for electrical and electronic engineering, fourth for mechanical engineering, and sixth for aeronautics and astronautics. Um, as I said, bottom right, uh, ranked 97th in the, in the world, that's out of all universities globally. And we are sixth in the UK and 76th in the world for engineering and technology. In the bottom right hand corner, just the, the reference to accessing world class facilities, we have excellent facilities here in Malaysia and those will be even better once we have moved to our new campus in July 2021. Um, but also when we transition students to the UK, they have access uh, to uh, world class facilities that are, are used for, as it says at the, in, the, in the slide there, for Formula One teams and Olympic athletes. Um, and so there's a huge influence that the University of Southampton has on a number of different sectors and successes um, across the UK and, and worldwide. And we want our students to have access to those and for those to really be part of their learning experience while they're at the university. So we're very, we're very pleased to offer that opportunity to students. The university has six UK campuses. And I just wanted you to, to really be aware of and see a, a, a picture of each of those. And I can just tell you, tell you what they are. So the, uh, the Highfield campus to the left and the top left and the Avenue campus situated below it on the slide, those are the home of the central administration of the university. And they also house the arts and humanities subjects. So languages, uh, economics, politics, uh, those sorts of, all of those uh, humanity subjects are taught at Highfield and Avenue campuses, and they are located very close to each other. Um, just down the road, we have the Boulderwood campus, which is the engineering campus. Uh, beside that is the University Hospital, which is the medical school. Uh, next to that, we have the Waterfront campus, which is the home of the National Oceanography Center, something that Southampton is also known for worldwide. So we're very proud of that campus. It's very beautiful um, as well. Certainly worth a visit if you're in Southampton. And just below that is the Winchester campus, which is the home of the Winchester School of Art, which is the Southampton University School of Art. So we have this range of campuses. They all offer students a fantastic learning experience. And then the university has its seventh campus, which is the University of Southampton, Malaysia. The building in the picture is our current campus. And I'll show you just a few slides along. I'll show you a, a, a picture, an illustration of the new campus that we're moving to, um, that our students will have the, have the opportunity to study in. So moving on. Just to tell you a little bit about the programs that we offer. So if I start just bottom right, the engineering foundation year. So we give students the opportunity to come into our uh, engineering foundation year. And during that year, they are able to really form an understanding of the different areas of engineering. And then they can choose which undergraduate program they move on to. So looking at the other three programs on that slide, the mechanical engineering, the aeronautics and astronautics engineering and the electrical and electronic engineering, they are all integrated master's degrees.
They are all progression routes off of our foundation, our engineering foundation year. And today you will have the opportunity to hear about all of those programs, including the foundation year. We have live sessions and staff talking about those. You can listen to the live sessions and also ask any questions that you have. But just to give a, an overview, they are two plus two programs. This uh, three plus two if the student does the foundation year with us as well. So they do two or three years in Malaysia, at the University of Southampton, Malaysia. And then we transition the students after part two of the undergraduate program. We transition them to the UK where they join the UK co cohorts and do the final two years of their integrated master's degree in engineering. It's very much a tried and tested model. It works very, very well. And uh, we have students, we have actually some students who have done the program and are going to run the alumni session at the end of today's virtual open day so that actually you can get a, a sense of the experience from students who have actually been through it. So I hope you'll be able to join that session as well. Um, in terms of each of those programs, we wouldn't want you to think that actually the once you've chosen your area of engineering that you're just set with a very sort of structured set of modules. There's actually a number of options that you can choose within each of those different areas of engineering. So if you if you have a if you're in, let's say, mechanical engineering and you start to develop a particular um, interest in part of mechanical engineering, you can start to tailor your degree or make it a little bit more bespoke to your particular interest and strengths. So I won't go through all of the options that are written on these different lists, but I put them up um, to just to make sure that people can see what are some of the different areas that students can pursue once they've chosen their sort of umbrella uh, area of engineering that they are interested in. So there's lots of different things that you can choose from. Right, I'll move on from that. So just to do a little bit of a recap, some of this I've said, but I'll just recap it. Student study for two years in Malaysia, followed by two years in the UK. And, and I would just amend that by saying three years in Malaysia if you do the foundation year with us as well, and then you do the two final years in the UK. Students are offered the same course content and teaching quality as students in the UK, so they are exactly the same programs. Students transition seamlessly from uh, their studies in Malaysia into the studies in the UK because the module leads and the program heads in Malaysia work very, very closely with their counterparts in the UK. They offer exactly the same programs with the same content, and we make sure that the students have the same experience, the sort of equivalent experience in both places. So again, those students that start in Malaysia, also they do also have that additional uh, experience of studying in two different institutions during their degree, and we see that as a real advantage to them as well, both in terms of adaptability, but also just giving them uh, different experiences that they will be able to apply uh, very positively to their future um, employment uh, and the different experiences that they will, they will have throughout their career. We think this sets them up very well for that. As I said, we have about 10% uh, of our students are international. We're looking to increase that to 20% uh, over the years. And then we think that's about the right balance for us. Um, so about 10% international students at the moment. And the little video that I'll show you at the end of this will give you, it, it, there's a map and it shows you where our international students are from. So I think you'll find, you might find that quite interesting as well to see. Um, students are taught by world leading academics who teach both in Malaysia and in the UK. So some of the, what we have is uh, something called flying faculty and we have uh, each year brought uh, some UK uh, expertise from engineering faculty at the University of Southampton, UK. We've brought them over and they teach the modules um, at the University of Southampton, Malaysia. We have also recently started doing that virtually as well, so them teaching staying in the UK but teaching our students virtually and that is actually going incredibly well as well. So we're going to look at all sorts of models, uh, continue to look at, at different models for making sure that students have the widest range of input and influence into their studies. Again, because we think that's a huge advantage to them um, as they maneuver through their degree. And we have this very low student staff ratio, which I mentioned, which is uh, sitting at about eight to one 
uh, at the moment in terms of uh, students to staff and we are looking very much to keep keep that support in place um, even as we expand because we see it as a huge advantage in terms of supporting th the students um, through uh, their their study experience. Uh, so it's not all study, they also have lots of clubs and societies that they can join. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list, it's just some of the ones that the students currently have in place in terms of clubs and societies and things that they really enjoy doing. The reason that I say it's not an exhaustive list and that there are many more is because our clubs and societies are actually run by our students. We have a student association which is run by students and they're the ones that choose what clubs and societies they want to have each year. So many of them stay the same year on year. The clubs and societies are common to different cohorts of students that come through, but actually each year we see a few new ones pop up and a few that fall off the list. And because it is entirely driven by what the, the student cohorts at any given time want to, want to spend their time doing. They have a budget which we encourage them to, to use and, and channel into different activities and the creation of different clubs. Uh, and we think that they manage that exceptionally well. And also we've given them in the new expansion project, we've given them more space within the expansion in order to make sure that those clubs and societies um, can be even more successful and they have more space in which to, in which to get together and enjoy each other um, and, and run some of these clubs. So we're very excited about, about building up the area of clubs and societies at Southampton Malaysia with our students. Uh, in terms of the Southampton Malaysia academics, I said before that uh, we have a lot, we have world leading academics at Southampton Malaysia who teach our students throughout their degree. 100% of the academics that are teaching on our undergraduate programs have a PhD. Um, that is a, an exceptional statistic, again, one that we're very, very proud of. 60% of those academics have PhDs from leading British, Australian or American universities. Uh, the other 40% have them from leading universities, either across Malaysia or across the wider ASEAN region. So uh, an exceptional group of academics. And I would note just from the photos on this slide that I know that uh, Varun, who is uh, the, the bottom middle picture, will be joining the Mech and Arrow live session this afternoon. Um, and Shirley and Grace, who are featured on the right-hand side, the photos on the right-hand side of the slide, are also joining some of the sessions uh, during the day. And so you'll have an opportunity, and I'm sure if you join those sessions, you will hear them talking about engineering at Southampton, Malaysia as well. So uh, moving on, just uh, again, this is just to give you a sense of what our graduates go on to do. These are all pictures of our current, our, um, our, our uh, graduating students from uh, Southampton, Malaysia. They have all gone on to work for these companies that you see featured in the pictures. And actually one of, one of the students here has now become a member of the University of Southampton, Malaysia alumni board. And so he helps to also drive the direction of Southampton, Malaysia and talk about how we can, what we can do in order to stay connected with our alumni as they go out into the world of work, what they can give back to the university and also how we can continue to support them. So it's a fantastic uh, relationship that we have with our students, even once they've gone on into the world of work. And I thought that this would give you a chance to really see what some of them have gone on to do since they graduated. Um, but we also have uh, a number of other industrial linkages. Those aren't just related to where our students go and work. They are also related to research relationships that our academics have in terms of uh, delivering uh, their research portfolios, which again are incredibly important to us because that research feeds directly into their teaching, which uh, then impacts very positively on our students. So these are some of these are research relationships. But they're also about uh, placement opportunities, internship opportunities, and where we bring people in from the different companies in order to give talks or master classes so that we can make sure that right from the beginning of the student's learning experience, they are connecting with and understanding what, uh, if different, what the range of employers are that they might go on to, to work for, what kinds of opportunities might be available, what do these different companies do, and how might they 
uh, be looking to attract students who are in the different areas of engineering and in future the different areas of business that we offer as well. And then finally, we have another one, couldn't fit them all onto the same slide, but these are other companies that we either work with uh, in some capacity or that our students go on to work for after they've graduated from the university. So I'll just move on now. So just a, a, a little bit about our expansion. I'm very, very happy to answer any questions that you might have at the end of this about the expansion. We are moving. We've decided that actually it's time to expand. The University of Southampton Malaysia has done exceptionally well with its uh, current engineering programs. And so the expansion plan has two arms. One of the arms is that we are moving into a new, very, very high quality building, which is five times the size of the, the campus that we have now, the building that we're in right now. Um, so it's about 150,000 square feet. It is in the process of being built. We are due to take possession of it in January 2021. We will spend seven months fitting it out and we will move all of our operations there in July 2021. Um, and all of the students will, will, that are studying with us at that point will shift over with us. It is providing current students with a fascinating experience of being part of the planning of our new building. They've made requests which we have incorporated into the new build and it's fantastic to see them uh, really gain that experience of being part of such an enormous change program. So that in itself has been a, been a very fa uh, interesting experience for us, um, but also we're, we're going to be very, very pleased to be able to offer students the, the new campus and these new facilities um, uh, from 2021. Uh, the current campus, it's not inconvenient in any way, it's actually adjacent to the campus that we have right now, it's just across the road, and it gives them all the same access to the facilities that they currently have, uh, that are on the site that we're on, but actually increases that because it is surrounded by a commercial centre as well, and it is located directly beside the student accommodation. So uh, what, it, what we're looking at is giving the students a, a, a holistic experience of, of living and studying and socializing and, and doing their sporting activities all within one campus um, in order to improve the experience and make sure that they can, uh, they can really take advantage of everything that that site has to offer. And again, I'll show you a, a few pictures of it in a minute. Um, the other thing is, is that so part of the expansion plan is the estate expansion and the other part is the program portfolio. So we are looking at expanding our portfolio and are looking to have to bring in the um, business management degree an accounting and finance degree and a BSc also in computer science. Uh, the, the program that we are recruiting for right now for September 2020 is the BSc in Business Management. And so if people have any questions about that today, I would be more than happy uh, to answer them and tell you a little bit more about that program. Uh, in terms of the business, Southampton Business School and its rankings, uh, so we are now offering the BSc Business Management from Southampton, Malaysia. We are offering it on a three plus zero model, which means that you can actually do the whole degree at Southampton, Malaysia. Um, and again, we can talk all about the sort of advantages of doing that if people have some specific questions. But also, I just wanted to mention, there's also the opportunity to transition or have part of your study experience at Southampton in the UK uh, as well. Because again, like the engineering programs, the business program is exactly the same as the one run in Southampton, UK. And so there's no problem with a student doing maybe a year at Southampton, Malaysia, and then deciding to do two years at Southampton in the UK. So there's lots of flexibility in where students will study this program. Um, and we can work with you to decide what is the best plan uh, for you. Um, in terms of rankings, uh, this program is ranked third in the UK by the Complete University Guide 2020. And so, what, again, what we do here is we look for the programs that are highly ranked, that are globally relevant, and that also are, will meet the needs of uh, Malaysia and the wider ASEAN region in terms of employability uh, in the years to come. So we've had some very, very uh, interesting conversations about what are the best programs to bring in and we certainly felt like this was the next one that would be right to add to our portfolio. Uh, in terms of the new campus, 
uh, this is it uh, in, in front of you. I uh, just wanted to point out a few things. The two tower blocks are the student accommodation, so that's where the students live. About uh, probably about a third to a half of our students already live uh, in what is called the eco nests. Um, and the other group either live uh, locally at home or in another accommodation, or they live in the campus, the, the, the area behind the lit up picture in the forefront of this slide, that is EduCity, that's where we're located right now, and there's some student accommodation there as well, and so some of our students are currently living there. Um, but we are moving over into the, the eco world development, which is the one that you see lit up in front of you. Uh, directly in the forefront is an eco galleria, so it gives a huge number of eateries, uh, coffee shops, grocery stores, uh, medical clinics, uh, all sorts of facilities for students to, to have on their doorstep. The University of Southampton, Malaysia is the building at the back of the Galleria, so it's located, it's not part of the Galleria, but it is linked to it, and so we've taken that building, and I would note that directly across the road from that is the EduCity Sports Centre, and so they have all the sport, uh, fantastic sporting facilities available to them as well. So living, socialising, studying and pursuing their sport is all, will all now be contained um, in one very, very convenient footprint in order to give them the best experience possible. So that's what the camps is looking like and I just wanted to show a few pictures. Uh, these are mock-ups from the interior design company. We haven't made final decisions about it but I wanted to give you the sense of space that we're looking um, to, to, to create in the new campus. This will be part of the main lobby area. Uh, this will be, uh, this is a mock-up of part of the digital library and learning center that we are putting in for students. It's about 9,000 square feet of learning uh, space for them and it will be segregated into different parts. So there will be private learning parts, there will be group study areas, and there will be places where students can just relax and socialize and in a more informal way. So we're looking at that space. And then finally, we are putting in some tiered lecture theaters, uh, one for 200 students and two 100 person lecture rooms that are tiered and will give a, again, a fantastic uh, student experience in terms of supporting their learning. That is then supported by a whole range of uh, engineering labs and high quality smaller learning uh, rooms and spaces uh, in order to complement the larger lecture spaces. So that was just to give you a sense of what the, what the new campus is going to look like. So that's the end of the presentation. What I wanted to do now, I'll just stop sharing that for a minute, and what I wanted to do now was just pull up a, a video um, which what it does is it takes the slides that I've just given and it really looks to bring those to life. Uh, I would also note that we, as I said before, we look very much at making a contribution to Malaysia's success and also that of the growing uh, local Iskandar region. And you will see that referenced within the, the video. So I'm going to pull that up for you now.
uh, I hope that brought to life some of the information that was in the slides and uh, just gave you a sense of how we position uh, the university in terms of contributing also to the local economy uh, and the, the economy of the country country in the wider ASEAN region. Um, and that's exactly why we're looking to put in new programs that also will help uh, support that growth. The other thing that I would just say, I just want to mention this, is that engineers, because we have a, we are at our core is engineering here at Southampton, Malaysia at the moment, um, engineers by their very nature are very entrepreneurial and actually putting in the business programs, I thought uh, would give a fantastic chance for us to also offer some of those modules um, as sort of individual chunks that engineering students could also take advantage of. And so they could get some business expertise, uh, project management, change management, leadership, strategy, all of those sorts of things. They could get small chunks of some of that business experience as they were pursuing their engineering de uh, degree. And it will bring, it, it will enable them to develop some additional employability skills um, as they maneuver through. So both uh, in terms of supporting the engineering programs and also as business programs in their own right, we thought that this would actually create um, a, just a fantastic portfolio uh, for us to maneuver through uh, um, into our expanded state. So that's what I wanted to say. Now there's one more video, it's, it's shorter than that one. And actually what it does is it just gives you a sense of the accommodation tomorrow and beyond. Thank you very much, everybody, and we will uh, hope to see you in all the different sessions today. Uh, and uh, if you have, as I said, if you have any questions at all, please do connect with our counselors. So they can answer all of those for you. Okay, thank you very much.